Troy. How hey. Are you doing? I said hey. we would have a special guest. I'm sure you, you, you know some of these faces. <laughs> you were one of the person who sent me a question, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I did a couple of, I, I, yeah, I chucked a couple of questions in there. Um, they were just, I didn't know what you were planning for this session. So I just thought I'd just chuck some thoughts in there and see. Really, honestly, I didn't prepare anything. You know, I was walking with my son and I said, hey, what should I ask him? Because he's, he's watching YouTube and said, well, you should ask him how they got their name, how they started doing YouTube and what's their most uh, uh, looked video. Like, OK, I can start with that, you know, but uh, it could also be about music if we want to. Yeah, or both. We can make it both. I can bring my nine-year-old in here and he can talk about Minecraft if you really want to. But <laughs> I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole. Oh, this is a pretty amazing crew you've got here, New Tricks. Well, what's cool about this is that all the people here you see, and there's a lot of them that are not here, what I've been seeing in the last, I think, you know, half year is a lot of uh, friendly community approach in the uh, mobile music making. And when I thought about making a live video chat, I said, why not have other people there also? You know, there, because we all share that, I would say passion. We firstly, I think in my case, and I think a lot of us, that's the, the logic is the first reason we do this because we're passionate about it, you know? And then if we can make money out of it, yeah, hopefully we can, but <laughs> Bonus. Um, you know, people expect yeah. us to be rich. And honestly, if we're rich, most of the time it's because of something else. That's yeah. uh, often the, the other approach. So. It's not from YouTube. <laughs> no, that's it. No. I can start for this and say, well, my background is I actually work in a school. I've been working for the same school for 25 years. That's where I was a student. Um, and it's a sound recording and music production school. And then I was a teacher there. And I became gradually one of the director. But I went there. I was there for 25 years. And I actually just uh, quit the company uh, a month ago. And then I'm They're moving up. to another school in two weeks. So right now I'm between two work, two jobs, and I'm on vacation. Nice. So I'm, I'm right on my own vacation. So I'm happy to spend my vacation with you guys. <laughs> That's the best kind of vacation. I teach how to use the Profit 5 and the DX7 and um, a wealth of hardware samplers. You know, oh my God, I got to enlist you to teach me how to program the DX7. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually preparing a Where class do we start? on that. I have I have already prepared a class. It's it's my next my next step is I'm going to do online courses because that's what I've been doing all my life as in person. So I'm starting very small FM dedicated to the DX7 uh, philosophy. So then you can share you know push it into what exists today, which there's a lot of FM. So yeah. I think it's kind of second no, coming back of FM today. You know, even the yeah. TRDS now is FM. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So it's, it's the uh, marriage of software and hardware now. So it's like all of this, the classic synthesis now married with all this new technology, they're re-releasing all of these old synthesizers. And it's like this new kind of golden age for analog uh, in general and digital, kind of like the marriage of it. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think, you know, it, it finally makes this stuff available to like regular schlubs like myself. Like I don't have thousands of dollars to go buy all of these, you know what I mean? Either exactly. the vintage or the new ones, right? Yeah. So I... I made a video about uh, the Synclavier and I would never get a chance to play a Synclavier ever. Like I know who would I call that has a Synclavier for me to like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know anybody. So it, it provides an opportunity for me to get a chance to play on this thing that I've been reading about in magazines literally my whole life. Yep. You know, everybody in the eighties talking about how it's the greatest of all synthesis, you know, and now I get to play with it. So that for me is one of the biggest advantages I, I get to play with a dx7 even if it's a model next time i'm over at somebody's house that has one i'm going to know my way around because i've already sure. played with the software version and, and gotten a leg up you know and and when you compare it like the dx7 virtual to a real one it's almost the same sound because it was already digital it's not like i can i can accept people saying well it's a virtual analog synth it's not a real analog I can accept that notion that when you play on some analog synthesizers, there's a difference. But from a DX7 hardware to a DX7 software, man, there's no difference. Right. It's there there absolutely point, isn't. Um, and, and I, I started off with like a really long background in FM, but the 
the world of iPad apps have has spoiled me. I couldn't go back to a hardware DX7 <laughs> ever. Like it, I couldn't deal with the interface. I just lose my mind immediately. Oh, I, man. One knob, one one yeah. slider. That's it. <laughs> well, to I, Dave's I point too, like that Fairlight. I mean, I would have never been able to play a Fairlight. I mean, like when when, exactly. I, when I when when I saw that that Terminator Two was made on that, and then I saw there was a, it was made on Fairlight. Did a bunch of deep diving, and then it turns out there's a freaking app for it. Oh my god! I mean, it was it was absolutely amazing. Well, when you think about that, the first the first Moog synths, right, were only purchased by people who could afford. Them. So, like sure. the Beatles were some of the first people to have a synthesizer because they were the only ones who could afford it because they're hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So, to be able to go back and play a Fairlight or a Synclavier or like even the Model Fifteen, the Moog Model Fifteen, yeah, yeah, any of yeah. these. I mean, these are what pioneers played on, but they were also what the richest of the rich people had at their disposable when they were the hottest thing on the planet. So yeah, it's a little weird to go back 30, whatever years later, but I, I agree with your point that that's making, it gives these synthesizers new life, right? Because they're being discovered by a whole new crowd of people, either folks sure. like myself who are middle-aged and, and discovering their childhood again, or, you know, all these, these younger kids who are out there who this is new to them now, but they can get their hands on it. Whereas it was, you know, unattainable before right and i think i think it's the options that we have now that are just through the roof somebody was saying that sure. it's a really that it's an amazing time right now for fm specifically i couldn't agree more um there's, there's ipad options there's options on the computer the new uh entry level electron model cycles fm synthesis groove box is like one of the cheapest groove box on the market and it features fm synthesis and sounds fantastic and what's interesting also is that um it, it does a lot more than the original FM synthesis. The sure. new generation of it is a much more powerful and, and user friendly than the original sure, generation, sure. which was well, really And cool. they fixed a lot of those old problems, right? Like now we don't have to worry about it going out of tune every 30 <laughs> minutes because the heat in the room has changed, right? Like that was an odd, <laughs> like we make that joke, but that was a real concern when they're working in these studios, you go for a couple of hours, Every 35 minutes, you got to check the tuning on whatever synth you're using, and that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, I can't so, even imagine. Ugh. Yeah, and so <laughs> to add that on top of menus and, you know, save state saving and just all of the things that we take for granted just from a functionality standpoint, and then you've got, you know, you've got a, a Moog Model D that now has, you know, as many oscillators as you want because it's polyphonic. <laughs> you know, like all these kind of sure. things that seem obvious now but were a, a, a physical hindrance in the past that now it's, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like I, I often wonder why somebody would make a synth that wasn't polyphonic just because it seemed, I'm not a programmer, but it seems like it would be a no brainer. Well, let me just throw a switch in there that makes it mono poly, you know? Yeah, I, no, 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 it's not trying to start an argument or, or go down that well. But just <laughs> well, it's interesting, like, Dave. You... The rationale, right? <laughs> it's, because it's... we have the technology available to yeah. us now to do it, to make it so easily. That was simply my point. And, yeah. and, and the, nicest, the nicest thing you have today is that that power is portable. You know, 10 years ago, that power was maybe on laptop. But yeah, maybe. maybe it's in your phone. You know, yeah. I go to the store. I wait for my wife, she goes to buy stuff. I sit down in the car and I open my iPhone and I work on the song. And then I save it in the cloud. I go back home, I turn on something else, download, continue on it, working on another. I mean, it's just, this is so much liberating. You know? Yeah, my yeah, iPad yeah. never leaves my studio. I don't, I don't really work on music outside yeah. the studio. Even I though it's like, portable, yeah. I, I treat it like a straight up studio, yeah. I don't know. But I'm the same way. I'm the same way. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a homebody by default, I think. So yeah. even though like half the stuff I have in here could easily be taken somewhere, I, I don't really have anywhere that I'm more comfortable <laughs> than where I am right now, if you get yeah. my drift. So, yeah. I mean. Yeah. You guys I'm it's funny. Get, uh, like a benefit of a specific area. Like if you know that you're going to be in a place where you're going to have some time in your hands, you can be inspired sure. by the, the, the atmosphere there. Like I have made the angriest Animog patch ever when I was in the Honda uh, waiting room. <laughs> 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 what would we make at the DMV? I'm not oh, quite sure. I'm kind of scared to figure it out. I don't know. Now, there's an album for you. Everybody go death, to the DMV and make your track. I think it would be death metal. I think it yeah. might have to be death metal for the DMV. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, that's so all. I wanted to say thank you to, to Jacob and to you, Nutrix. I guess 
I come across a video, I don't know even how, but we're locked down here in Melbourne at the moment. I'm stuck at home. Used to play guitar a lot. And then um, I always loved playing like the native instruments, sort of absinthe and back in the early 2000s, those software synths and stuff like that. I used to love that. Then my hardware computer just died and I hadn't really got into computing with the kids and stuff for a while or playing music for a while. Guitars come out in COVID and just having fun with that. And then, um, I, yeah, I started watching some YouTube videos, come across Jacob and doing some really amazing sounds and started to download a few apps, come across you, new tricks as well. You had that Xeon kind of tutorial. So, you know, you talk about teaching before. I think what was really powerful there is you like go download this $15 app and you can sit with you and watch you turn the exact sort of dials and stuff on that keyboard in real time and actually start to play and someone that's sort of getting into a new instrument and you playing that exact same instrument at the same time and making the same sounds i think that was very powerful and i think with this ipad genre you can actually really pick up these thousands and dollars worth of synths that you're talking about here and actually start to tweak them and actually get the same sounds out of it and go wow that's amazing and yeah. because- i've actually found it you know, crazy it's been a, just an amazing learning curve over the last few months for me and i just yeah i don't know just really really loving it so thank, thank you, you for everyone. sharing that yeah that, that's yeah, why we do absolutely. it absolutely yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly that's why, why we do it, we do it. <laughs> you know and and what you're saying is that what's interesting is that when you look at the ipad or you know anything that is software based today people will say well it's a software but when you look at this it's a software in the box yeah, that's yeah. what it is. It's a computer in the box that runs a software that is a synthesizer. It's Absolutely. just dedicated. And then there's also firmware update and blah, blah, blah. So it's a computer dedicated to making music. So there's no reason outside of the uh, code itself and, and the capacity of the CPU of an iPad that mm-hmm. you could not make mm-hmm. great sound out of it. It's well, just everything's a computer. Cool. That's your it. television's sure. your television's a computer. I mean, yeah, your, today, your, yeah. your microwave's a computer. Like everything's <laughs> Wi-Fi. Hey, it's the Internet of Things. I have another question for you, probably for everyone here. I have a lot of photography background, and I kind of got in there when like the 5D Mark II Canon camera came out. It was quite a high-end, um, I guess, digital camera, and I kind of had to shoot a couple of weddings. So I, a second shot with a few photographers, and they were coming just out of that sort of manual kind of photographer phase and then I came in with my new DSLR I had lots more pixels and all the fancy bells and whistles and stuff so I actually had a better camera than a 10 year old 20 year old wedding photographer right but even though I had all the pixels and all the awesome kind of technology he was still out shooting me like every sort of wedding and I'd second shoot and he always get the better shots I've got a couple of good shots and that was probably more luck than good management at the time but there's a lot of great songs back in the nineties and two thousands. I'm wondering today with all this new technology, with all the new sounds, you've got every app known to man, is music getting better or are people able to make better music now with having 30 different software synths on their laptops and, and their, and their iPads and stuff. I, I want the answer since. to be what you want the answer to be. Like we all want the answer to be, Oh yeah. Music's getting great. But they, that's not the, the reason that <laughs> music's it's getting weird, good. It? It's, it's no, it's the fact that the, the wedding photographer who's got 10 years of experience and has the 10 year old camera is sh- better shots is, is the same sort of thing that we got here. So now it's easier for anybody to just show up and start making music. But the guy with 10 years of experience yeah. is going to be making a lot better music. And the, we're actually like I at least me personally I'm flooded with terrible music like I spend every yeah. morning listening to terrible terrible music uh, <laughs> so it, it really isn't getting any better it's just so more like, of it yeah it's just more of it <laughs> but is limitation the, the gear can't substitute the talent yet the gear can't yeah. substitute the talent yet I think and although we all kind of have a level playing field I think at this time and uh, and act access to 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 tools that are accessible to like everybody uh through like ipad and through low price you know to get into the you know i i think that experience and and sort of like coming from a place of groove i think is going to be essential for any 
everybody. And everybody who walks in the door isn't going to necessarily be coming from that same place, even though the door is wide open now, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think that uh, the AI is just going to help us out a lot anyway. So, uh, but no, I, I think that- uh, I'll, I'll take that I'll random like a, AI. I'll take it. <laughs> like, seriously, I think that uh, like a big part of what we do on the channel is we really want to like, just get this message out of like, anybody can make music now. But that doesn't mean that anybody can make fantastic music. It just means that sure, uh, sure. there's now a, a, just a huge more plethora of genres out there. So the, you know, your yeah, taste of yeah. subjectiveness yeah. of a uh, good or bad, that's always been, you know, been subjective. That's always been. So music has always been good and bad, but now there's just a whole lot more accessibility for people. I think that that's just like huge. And that's why I started the channel is just to um, really just get the message out there that look, uh, I think that the world would be a much better place if more people were making music. And I don't think people know sure. that you, anybody can make music now. And uh, we need to get the message out there because this is like everybody yeah. just thinks that the iPad is for email. But this is actually a full blown music production yeah, right device on. now. So uh, the <laughs> Is, uh, Take synthesis important. for for instance. I mean, I don't know how often people like ask me, like Jacob, how do you know how to do these things? And many of us probably have gotten this same question: How do you know how to make these sounds? How do you know exactly what to tweak? Well, what a lot of people see is like they, they see all these synthesizers, they, they buy a synthesizer, and they think that they're instantly going to be able to make awesome sounds because they're buying an awesome synth from Moog or from Roland or from whatever. It might have the most popular name out there. You buy it, and you still are unable to make sounds is because there's a disconnect. They don't see all the years, all the days we've been sitting alone mm. with our stuff mm. and just tweaking, 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 learning about this stuff. So we actually know what we're doing. And the, someone watching our videos can't really see all that. And you, mm. you, you're going to have to be willing to sit down and really use the stuff <laughs> in order to learn the stuff. And because if you don't do that, you're never going to get good at it. So you just have to grind and grind and grind <laughs> until, it, until you get good because it's going to be shit in the beginning. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is like 40 years old. They were, wow. This was made for the Golden System 100. Oh, God. <laughs> I still have it. I didn't have the System 100, but <laughs> like, I mean, you need to read and learn. That's, that's what Jacob is saying. I mean, you need, and, yeah. and yeah. what's cool about electronic music is you can learn by doing. You can just turn knobs and even, even somebody who says, well, I don't know how to use EQ, play with it. Just well, play that's it. True. True. And that's the at one point, we'll stop and it sounds good, you know? Yeah. I mean, to, to Vortex's point, I think, now we have this sense of availability that we didn't have ever before, right? I mean, that's, I'm not gonna go down this road, but the, all the record companies and everything, that was the distribution. That's how everybody got the record, right? Radio and going to the store and buying a CD or a tape or a record or whatever your media was. Now we can have instant access to music and we have the entire earth full of music because now <laughs> anybody can put their music out. So I think the availability has widened, but that doesn't mean the quality has changed. Right. I don't think it's good or, or or bad or better or worse. I think it's probably still the same. But now exactly. we're there's no filter. Right. Previously, we had the filter for better right. or for worse of yep. those record companies, of those executives who were making the decisions about what we were able to hear. Right. What we had access to. And then we had to choose from what they chose. Now, right. the, the there's a reason are gone. for that. There's and a so for that. it, it yeah. goes with what you said earlier. I mean, when somebody has a Sinclair here. You needed to have a lot of money, so it was there was a, a, a record mm. company saying, "I'm going to pay for that." So then I'm sure, going to choose sure. the company, the band that will make me money because I cannot afford. So the studio costs a lot of money in the time. The recording costs a lot of uh, yeah, money. Yeah. All the tools cost so much that the company needed to be sure, or at least kind of sure, that they would make money off of it. So right. it was, it was as you say, the filter. Now today, there's no filter because. It's like anybody can anybody can write a a, a book. Anybody can get uh, you know a, a word processor and write a book. Sure, but, and there are advantages and disadvantages to that, right? Like yeah. I would never have heard your music or Dean's music or Jakob's music or Tim or any you know if not for this wonderful internet that we have. However, that yeah. also means that we're subject to the thousands of hours that Tim has to put himself through horrible music every morning. So, but, but also you know, I think, <laughs> but to, I think, to, to, oh, to sorry, okay. point quickly is that it's, it's about practice, right? It's like anything else. Like I come from rock bands and you 
could always tell the guy who didn't practice his guitar who sure, went out and sure, looked sure. at the store and just plunked away on stage and sucked. So <laughs> it, you got to spend the time no matter what it is. So the instrument is only as good as the musician, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning your intent, your how much you practiced, you know, what you're going for, your style. I mean, all of those things are a factor in the quality of your output. Um, and then, then of course, quality is super subjective. So you know sure. that's what it falls to. i didn't mean to cut you off vortex <laughs> so no i just think that i i absolutely agree and i just think that um it was kind of just to your point i think that now uh as we continue to push how much content we can create uh, we're gonna have to create new systems to be able for people to be able to go through that so now we have streaming services like spotify but that's going to hit capacity at some point too i think what is it fifty thousand two hundred thousand songs being uploaded a day now on spotify so i think uh, wow. we'll, we'll have to invent yeah it's, it's getting crazy so i think that we're gonna have to invent that like doubles every year and then quadruples and it's it's been you know it's been on an exponential <laughs> sure, pace sure. and so i think we're gonna have to invent more technologies and i don't know what that looks like but it's just the good news is that we're going to keep pushing with, with thanks to the internet and now thanks to to, you know devices like the iPad we're going to keep pushing the limits we're going to keep inventing new systems and keep making it more accessible for everybody and I think it's just we're on this exponential curve here of technology and we're just going to keep going and allow and making it more accessible for more people to access music and I that's thought a good you brought thing. up a really good point with the subgenres uh, where <clears throat> like we do have just this explosion of mu music like it's new music it's good music it's bad music it doesn't matter there's new people exploring new genres every single day yeah and sure, i think sure. that's a lot of fun like uh uh one thing that the internet has really uh shown everybody is it doesn't matter how weird you are there's somebody else that's just as weird as you and they're into Absolutely. that same weird thing <laughs> yeah. it's a really Humble wonderful good boy, boy, man. We got a class everybody's that a freak point. right like, yeah. Yeah. so oh, no, 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 i think we're seeing the same thing in music we're following my cover man <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really seeing like just insane combinations of different things like dub was suddenly a thing that people just started throwing into every single kind of genre <laughs> yeah. and it, a lot of it was actually quite good uh and, <laughs> a couple of people here are responsible for that too. Uh, cough, like, flow writer, it, cough. It, it, it doesn't even matter if, if what you're doing doesn't hit. Like I, I have a, a personal love of that uh, 90s acid house sound, but I want to do it in a modern vibe. And like, it never hit. Like I never found an audience for it, but I did find some people and enough people that were into it that I was, I felt like it was worth continuing to do that and explore it for those people that were into it. I kind of feel that way about synthwave. Like the fact that that exists as a genre is hilarious to me. Right? It's, <laughs> it, it's an entire I love genre it. of music I like emulating it. movie music, incidental movie music from the 1980s. Like that's a, yeah, what a specific thing, that is right? Very but then niche. now there's all sorts of subgenres of synthwave, which yeah. is even more ridiculous. <laughs> I and love I love it. all of it. Like I love I, it, all of it. it's playing exactly to me, right? But it's ridiculous <laughs> that it exists. I have, I mean, I, I have a hard time understanding the, the subgenres. I mean, even <laughs> yeah, for no, I, so do I. So, so arbitrary. Do I, so when somebody I. in electronic music says dark techno, I'm like, what, what's that? I, dark. I, I, what's dark techno? It's a lot like, of minor I, keys. <laughs> yeah, every 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 one of those little tiny sub subgenres has like tempo requirements, has like instrument yeah. requirements, has That's things true. you cannot use. Otherwise, it completely isn't that genre anymore. Um, and I kind of have a, like a, a mantra, which is like no tempo. I mean, no, no genre limits because I'll just mix whatever and I'll put it in a big pot. I'll mix it all up it, a little Like That's what like rock and roll is all about. Dean Taking is the Bruce Lee. From, from, from <laughs> everywhere, all that, that, that you've got, your Absolutely. personal influences. And then yeah. what, you know, what happens when you mix that up and put that out? Dean but, is the Bruce Lee of music. Well, like water. My understanding is that this um, vision of only talking about one style or one subgenre would be uh, more linked to the fact that these people might have a background of DJs saying, I'm doing that. Sure, style sure. Of music. Yeah. So I need to create stuff that will fit into my crowd that listen to that style of music. That's how I see it. Because sure, sure. if you're just a creator, there's a good chance that you don't care. You're just gonna create, <laughs> you know, you create whatever feels right and, and oh. it feels good. So if it's electronic, if it's dark, happy, sad, it goes with what you need to convey on that moment. At least that's how sure. I see it. I, I, never, I never saw myself into one style. I, I, I just said, I'm doing rhythm and noise, you know? 
I don't know what it is. It just uh, as somebody that has to uh, like try to explain to everybody what kind of music I'm going to be featuring. Like I try to put in a little blurb at the top of every article saying, "Hey, this is uh, this type of music." And sometimes it's this crazy ass genre that I got to come up with a, a term for it. And I'm I'm reminded of this uh, Primus uh, lyric every single time. I looked it up just to make sure I said this correctly. So, hey ho, Mr. Kringle, have you heard the brand new sound? It's a cross between Jimi Hendrix, Bocephus, Cher, and James Brown. It's called heavy hometown new wave, cold filtered, low calorie dry. Like I, I <laughs> some kind of goofy <laughs> thing like that. There was a question um, that I wanted to ask you guys about <laughs> where do you see the iPad going in the next years for the music? I think we're on a pretty serious incline with the iPad. We've got a lot of like serious companies that are, you know, porting their uh, apps and whatnot over. I, I think that the users are really demanding more and more and more and more and wanting to use the iPad more and more. I think we're going to continue to see an evolution of this as like as the um, as, as new models continue to come out, you know. I think it's it's pretty much just like I say on the website on Mobile Music Pro. Uh, it's uh, we we had uh, mainframes, then we brought that down to you know servers. We brought that down to computers. We brought that down to laptops. And and I think the the next inevitable age is of course the the mobile devices with the iPad. And one day you know many years in the future we won't even have these big you know computers. We'll just we'll just take our single device with us and then put it on any screen. And uh, I think the iPad with its continued evolution of processors every single generation almost sure. just 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 bringing it up like crazy to the point to where it's surpassing many other mobile devices like it, like laptops. Um, I think that it's an inevitable thing that, 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 the whole world eventually starts moving more towards um, mobile music production because it is just, it's completely freeing. Uh, it, though I don't, of course, take the device anywhere. It is absolutely a huge, 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 huge draw for regular people and for, sure. rest, for the rest of the sure. world, for even for sure. other other countries, like second and third world countries, like to be able to get a, a four or five year old, like uh, iPad Air 1, and you can, the things you can do with that still is absolutely incredible. Absolutely. So, uh, that, that is going to be the future. Like the more and more companies, we've already seen it. It's just coming in little drips and drops where we see the waterfall ahead uh, with like Fab Filter and all these other big companies. Porting yeah, down Fab Filter was so. a huge door for us to get open. That was the, the biggest thing yet, I think. You know, since I've been on iPad, yeah, Fab Filter. Agreed. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just no, right totally here agree. for Fab Filter. You know, and also when, when Eventide got in, it was a you know yeah oh they yeah, yeah. yeah. Going, okay they're it. going yeah. for it mm, now. Yes, I, I'm not I I've got no inside information, but my feeling is that Roland will have the Xenology wow. from the Roland Cloud on the iPad. When I talk to them, they say that would be just not next level. Now, that would really be such a game changer. Group. That'll they're saying that they're just looking at how the iPad is going to see when. So, I mean, it's, it's going to come. The question is when. It might be in I'm, six months. It might be in a year. Well, I'm sure I mean, they'll release it for their, for their DAW first, right? And then eventually, hopefully, AUV3s. And when you really need to get on Korg. Uh, to start releasing the products in AUV. Yeah, Come yeah. on, Cor we love you, Korg. But <laughs> just, just one last, just one Seriously. last pro Roland thought before we move on to like Korg or whatever. I really want to say go Roland right now because what they're doing, I'm buying into it. A yeah. line of instruments and a line of software that sort of all ties together and something that allows sound designers to be able to design sounds and then load those into the hardware including samples and whatnot this is yeah. like next level stuff i've been at this since like 1994 this is next level stuff where it's like all of these sounds are going to be compatible with the software with the hardware i mean forget about Amazing. it go roll in man keep yeah, it off yeah and their daw is awesome their their daw on the ipad is awesome but you it's know so that it existed. Efficient. It existed before they bought it. It was it was from the company Open Lab. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. right. Hardware, Stage light or you know, something like that. Computer, yeah, some light software in yep. you know in the nineties. There existed, and it was called uh, like Stage Light. But it is so efficient, man. Uh, like, their their program. I didn't know that that was it. the evolution of Stage Light. Yep. They okay. keep make, releasing. They keep making re more releases than any other DAW. They update their DAW more than any other. Uh, I think in the entire ecosystem. And they're actually listening because I've been. Maybe I've got a... Which is a bonus, yeah. I mean, you talk to them and I got the week after there was an update and part of what I asked was in it. So it's like, they, they, nice. are, they want to be yeah, a awesome. better tool. So at least they're working on it. That's cool. But to your question, Nutrix, about the future of the iPad, um, 
Mm -hmm. I think that, I mean, I agree. I think it's the future of, I, I hate to say like, well, it's the future of music, but I kind of think that because why wouldn't you have the power of your desktop and everything in your lap? Like, why would you not choose to do that? I, and, and at this point, these devices are, are just as powerful. And I've never been super, super PC guy. I kind of fell into the iPad thing, but I do everything. I don't have a PC that works. So I do 100% of everything I do, music, filming, everything. It's all done on the iPad, okay. all of it. And, it's, and the longer that this goes on, the easier it gets because at first it was yeah, sure nightmare. sure like file sure. management is is the biggest pain in my butt about Ugh. ipad this file management is is a nightmare mm -hmm. it's gotten so much easier but what i'd be interested to see is like this in this last year it seems as if with like fab filter and even tide it seems like the industry for lack of a better term is sort of taking the ipad seriously like oh by the way there's this whole other thing but now we're getting a lot of duplicates for a long time, any new app that came out, it was like sure. the first of its kind. It was like the only piano roll AUV3 or was the only whatever it was. And so I acquired all of these piecemeal things to sort of make it work. And now we've kind of gotten over that hump, but we're into everybody's releasing their reverb. Mm -hmm. Everybody's releasing their shimmer reverb. Everybody's releasing their infinite reverb. Every, you know, and so we're getting a lot of those now just different shades on the palette it'll be interesting to see where that ends up going, right? Uh, is everybody going to push to have it mirror like a PC kind of architecture? Because that's sort of the way it's going. But Or are we still going to lean into the fact that it's a touch device? And I'm conflicted because I want the, the deep functionality of, of a full laptop experience. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's going to be both. Screen, yeah, know? I think it's going to be both. I mean, because the, I the demand so. is going to be both. Because Apple will make sure that there's some kind of touch functionality in your app. I mean, if they're going to, if you want your app pushed by Apple, there has to be some kind of touch thing to make it to show off the touch. But and, for, and I'm not for power really users, like we've got the, the mouse now. Guy. I'm not yeah. really a playing on the screen guy, but I understand that there are those people out there. So I want to make sure that that's still something that's available for those that do it, yeah. even if yeah, it's not my I'm fit. like 95% mouse and you know, you see it in my tutorials, but the, the, the fact that everything is good is, is beautifully designed where you can just touch it and, and, you know, and actually touch your music and touch the controls. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I absolutely think that Apple will make sure that that is still a staple and stays with their devices. The, the only thing, hey guys, just yeah. but just sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no I've please. Got a, I've actually just got to jump off on, at ten. Um, unfortunately, I during my day, I'm actually working building websites, and I've actually got a massive two-hour big presentation coming out right now. So oh, nice. I'm spewing that I have to leave, um, and I just wanted to say another massive thanks to everyone. I kind of follow all you guys on YouTube. I've got yeah backlogs of stuff from your back catalogs from two years ago i'm sort of trying to still catch up on and um yeah i sort of then jacob dropped like a two-hour video overnight when i was sleeping i was like oh man there's like two hours of youtube and i'm gonna watch now um but uh i'm kind of like waking up and seeing the new posts that you guys put up there that kind of it just gives me so much inspiration and i just really appreciate um all your work sort of thing so this is amazing um new tricks and yeah i really appreciate you inviting me into this this group of people because oh. yeah everyone here has helped me i've been watching some of the your mobile music cubase videos lately and dean's been helping me with some some my rack tutorials and that, that my rack <laughs> thing the whole like rabbit warren uh new tricks has been amazing with all your tutorials jacob i pretty much download every app that you recommend jacob and, um, <laughs> I don't know, I, i've just got i feel like I just don't, I need to quit my day job to just get through uh, all this learning that I want to do. Over the next Me too. Time, so. <laughs> yeah, well, cool. right. Troy gets a shout out in, in all of our next videos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining Thanks, us, guys. Troy. Well, Thank like you, you guys for coming, talk, Troy. You guys could uh, yeah, talk forever. And I think that that's, that's amazing sort of just to see how much passion that you all have. And um, that just makes me want to be involved in this whole kind of community sort of thing. So yeah, thanks a lot. Well, thank, oh, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys later. See ya. So, uh, I've bye. got to dip out uh, pretty soon here, too. Uh, we got dinner plans. Uh, so yeah. I, I want to answer Same the question me. real quick uh, about where I want to see the iPad go in, in the next few years. I really sincerely hope that Apple's going to release a model that is powerful enough and cheap enough that it, it 
breaks the generation gap that they've got going on right now because but like all of our viewers and all of my readers are are all old guys like us and i would really like to see us break out of this and and reach the younger audience that, I mean, we've got the tools we've got the technology like we've got uh, all of the great stuff that people want but nobody has a tablet that's not around 40. so if if Apple can release a good iPad, like a seriously beefy, <laughs> cheap iPad that gets into the hands of younger generations. I think that that'd be great for everything. Guys, I really got to go. I want to thank you, Nutrix, for uh, setting this all up. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank sir. you, guys. Absolutely. It's great seeing y'all. I'm Thanks really happy that you, you guys time. were there. I'm really happy that you enjoy this. And I really enjoyed it, you know. And honestly, it's the type of thing I would like to do once in a while, maybe four times sure. per year or more if people are available. And maybe just shout out to people and say, hey, um, send us a question and we pick the one right. we want. And we, we bang the hell out of that question for like an hour. You know, yep. it's easy for us to talk about one topic for an hour. There's no reason. Sure. I mean, yeah. and it's just going to be fun. You know, that was my thank you. And you were nice enough to be part of it. And that's my thank you for my, 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 my followers. And one person got to be there to actually drive the question. That was- Go Troy! Troy was really nice. Yeah, Troy! <laughs> yeah, go Troy. I, I, Get I, real Troy! You know, he sent me like seven, seven questions that we didn't even go into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, we can have a conference. MobileMusicSummit.com, it's coming. We will be there. All right, nice. you guys I'm in, I'm much. in, I'm in. Hi, Tim. Thank you very much, everybody. And Love you guys. Uh, again, stay safe, and we see each other yeah. soon. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, stay guys. Safe, everybody. Thanks for stay your time. Stay safe. Bye bye. Stay see safe. Later. Take care, everybody. <clears throat> I, 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 well, I, I started. I, 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 I like it mostly when people call me stuff like sugar daddy or mother <laughs> or you know. <laughs> Done. So Dave, for, if you can call me that, Moo Moo works too. Moo Moo, oh, I love Moo Moo. Come on, man. So, so anyone can start. I have to go stop my my fan from farting. I look around. We're all old guys except for Vortex. And it's, it's I'm kind of old. I'm almost forty. Users, you are. Jesus you Christ, don't look so good. I thought you were oh twenty. Oh my god! I thought you were like twenty-two or something. Wow, you I'm never smoked a day I'm in your life, did you? <laughs> TikTok, guys, TikTok. I'm, TikTok I'm barely on Twitch. YouTube. I'm barely on YouTube and Twitch. <laughs> we all got to get on Twitch, guys. Come on. Guys, oh. guys. I made it. I made it to Instagram and Twitter, and I'm like 47. <laughs> this, this is all oh, wow. Greek to me. This is all Greek to me. I barely was able to get the Zoom app with the mute off of it earlier. <laughs> 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 but you got in. You made, you hey, well. Where the hell is it? I can't. Where's the, where's the God button? I always f this up. Jesus. I oh, no. Now you have to edit it. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, come on. There's two buttons.